I am Associate Professor Wendy Gold. I'm based in Sydney at the um, Children's Hospital at Westmead and uh, the Kids Research um, uh, Institute, which is a research facility of the hospital. Um, I'm also um, an academic at the University of Sydney, and I have an adjunct appointment at the Children's Medical Research Institute, which is also based at Sydney. And I've been working closely with Sim now for um, 10 years, and um, I'm going to hand it over to her to introduce herself. Um, thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Wendy. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is um, Simran Preet Kaur, and you can always call me Sim in shock. Um, I'm an early career researcher um, with professional experience in genetics and molecular biology. Um, I've been working in the space of uh, rare disorders uh, for the past 13 years, and uh, currently I'm working as a research officer in Professor John Christodoglu's lab here in Murdoch Children Research Institute, Melbourne, Australia. So yeah, my journey with Kepane started um, as a part of my PhD studies under the supervision of Professor John Christodoglu's and Dr. Wendy Gold, and ever since there is no look back, and we are continuously developing project um, um, with support of kipani.org, of course. Would you mind taking a moment and discussing what some of the broad questions about kip a that you are currently addressing in your research? We are working uh, very collaboratively with kipane.org to identify um, the questions that still needs to be addressed um, in CAN research to help facilitate the therapeutic pipeline for um, drug discoveries for CAN individuals. Um, so at the moment, we are developing four main projects in the lab. The first project is about the high throughput drug screening um, to find small molecules that um, help uh, with the Kifane defects. Um, so uh, I would like to say with the kind support of Kifane.org, uh, we have been working continuously to develop uh, a pipeline and a cellular models, which are quite compatible with the high throughput drug screening system. Um, and hopefully we will have uh, certain hits in the coming time that will um, open up avenues for further drug discovery. Um, the second project that we are quite excited to begin is to find the novel treatments for um, for treatment resistant um, Kifane related epilepsies that our CAM kiddos are going through at the moment. Um, we are quite pleased to let you know that we have been um, really successful in securing a three years project grant, uh, which is really highly competitive. Uh, it is the national grant, which is called the NHMRC Ideas Grant. Um, and again, we, um, we work together uh, with Kifane.org to uh, discuss um, this is the, what is the plan we should follow, what are the research questions which is still pending, and it really helped us to uh, develop this great project. And several of our Kipane Research Network members, they are part of this grant, and they will help to study it further. Um, so just very briefly, what we are going to do is we are going to have, uh, this study will be based on the induced pluripotent stem cells, uh, which will which are derived from our GAND individuals. Um, we will be forcing them to make neurons and uh, brain organoids in the dish that Wendy will talk more about later. Um, the idea is to um, uh, find the seizure phenotype in vitro in a dish and uh, compare it with the clinical reports for further designing the high throughput drug screening in order to find the drugs which may be able to help us um, to control this really bad epilepsy in the CAN individuals. Um, so for the next two projects, Wendy, would you like to uh, share your ideas? Thanks, Sim. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, one of the powerful approaches um, that we took is um, as far as um, addressing our, um, our current research was to actually approach kifwanalpha.org and ask them where the gaps in knowledge were. And this is one of the first things that Sim and I did. And I believe it's very powerful that, um, in connecting with um, foundations and associations like kifwanalpha.org so that we can identify where the gaps are, not overlap with any other researchers, but rather synergize and Sim has been tremendous in doing this with um, by leading this grant. So as you mentioned um, we have four um, main streams of research that we focused on. The other two um, are um, 
uh, advancing um, therapies in the gene therapy space. So um, Sim and I are working towards developing a gene therapy that could um, alleviate some of the symptoms that um, um, children with KIF1 alpha um, uh, variants have. Um, and then the other one, the other area of um, our research is trying to understand more about the underlying pathophysiology of the disorder and um, so that we can identify drug targets, we can identify disease drivers um, and, and, and move forward with, with our research. And a powerful way in which to do this is omics studies. Now what omics studies involve are genomics, um, transcriptomics, so that's looking at the message or the gene expression, proteomics, which is looking at the protein expression, and metabolomics, which is looking at the metabolites. And in combination and together, if we can intersect all of these pathways, and um, we can find common compounds, common um, molecules that, that could be driving the disorder or uh, could be targeted for therapies. So we believe that this holistic approach, these four pillars are very powerful, um, and we're very excited about um, embarking on this journey to find um, um, new therapies um, and also um, to better understand the disorder. Thank you for taking the time to describe those. It's clear that you are working on a lot of different angles, all of which are kind of informed by uh, the patient journey and patient needs. And we really appreciate that holistic approach. Uh, you did mention that you were using uh, induced pluripotent stem cells and deriving neurons from them for some of your studies. Uh, could you explain why patient-derived cell lines are so important for rare disease research in particular? So far, whatever studies we are doing is in the lab, is in, in dish, what we call as in vitro. So often we need um, um, in vivo models to validate our findings in the lab. And uh, more common used models to do this study is the rodent models, such as the rats and the mice. Um, but still there are um, quite a lot of differences between human and mice at the anatomic, embryonic, and metabolic uh, level. Uh, both of them, they do not um, match uh, when we talk about the molecular, structural, um, and genetic complexity, which is involved in the um, in human diseases, and especially in the rare diseases. Um, so that's why uh, we think we need a better model system uh, in which we can validate the findings. Uh, and um, so RPSCs, they are a great source. Um, the other thing what I would like to say is usually the rare diseases such as scan, they are brain-related disorders. So it's not always easy um, and possible to access a more disease-relevant uh, cellular models such as brain tissues as well. Um, and that's where the power of iPSCs comes in, especially which are derived from the patient cells. Um, iPSCs can be generated um, uh, quite simply and quickly these days from the samples that can be readily available from um, uh, affected individuals, such as the skin fibroblast and the blood samples. Essentially, they, um, they get reprogrammed back to the stage where they are pluripotent, which means we can force them to make any type of the cells within the body, such as the neurons and the organoids. Thus, we feel that patient-derived iPSCs, they are quite powerful um, tools to do the basic and the translation research, especially in the rare disorder field. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly right. And what we can do now, we can take these induced pluripotent stem cells and we can um, uh, grow them into neurons, which are um, brain cells, and also um, organoids, which are called mini brains in a dish. Um, and these are both very powerful in vitro models that can be used um, synergistically with animal models as well to better inform us on underlying pathophysiology and also to um, test novel therapies. Now, what um, the, 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 now, the difference between the neurons and the brain organoids is neurons are still two-dimensional. They fl lie flat on a dish, a culture dish in the lab, and they can be very informative However, they don't recapitulate the um, multidimensional, three-dimensional organizational structure of the human brain. And therefore, um, we have proposed to use both models, one 2D, uh, the, the 2D neuron models for simplicity and um, efficiency in growing neurons, and also the, the 3D um, brain organoid model for the complexity. And in our studies, we're going to be using both so that we have both models readily available. Um, now, what's exciting about the 3D um, 
brain organoid models is that they recapitulate many of the features of the human brain, um, some structurally, but most importantly, the electrophysiology and the maturity of the, the neurons so that we can look at um, uh, really complex molecular and chemical signals in the brain, and also how the neurons uh, talk to each other. And especially um, in the case for canned individuals, how um, their seizures arise and how we can prevent the seizures using different um, drugs to alleviate the symptoms. You know, having spoken about all of the different research angles that you're using to tackle questions about KIF-1A, uh, are there any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our KIF-1A community? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Dylan. Um, uh, first of all, for CAN's families, thank you so much for your um, confidence in us. And um, we really want to let you know that each one of you really motivate us to overcome challenges, big or small, um, simple or complex, to just, to just keep driving this research further. And for the lovely can kiddos and individuals, um, your smile is really precious, so keep smiling. And we can't meet, wait to meet with you in person in a next coming time. And uh, our message for the Kipani Research Network uh, members is, again, thank you so much for, um, uh, again, helping us to develop such great programs in the lab. It's great to be part of such a close-knit network uh, who believe in um, to connection, uh, collaboration, and contributions, and who believe in the open science. So it's really exciting. And uh, we are looking forward to work with all of you to keep moving this research further. I'd just like to add, add to that, to say that um, the CAN community are actually the driving force um, behind all our studies. Uh, it's your commitment um, to, to finding cures for, for finding better treatments that just cannot be underestimated. And um, the parents um, and the carers are just so passionate about advocating for their children, raising awareness through social media, through local campaigns. And um, it's, it's this drive that is actually so contagious that um, um, we feed off this, and it's essential that we um, keep these um, these relationships um, because it really drives our research and our passion to find cures and to better understand the disorder.